All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Don Drop. Uh, the full title of the game is actually Don Drop Radiant Sessions or something like that. The title escapes me, but it's right there in the description box. JP the Third, VNSNow.com, and I may have finally healed. I took a. I, I'm recording this back to back. I took a moment. Yeah, a moment. It was more like an hour. To just kind of sit back and let my voice heal up from having to go through all that repetitive motion. But hopefully, we're done with that and we don't have to deal with it anymore. And that would be nice, wouldn't it? So where we last left off, basically this school is running an illegal performance enhancement ring with an electronic device. They won't allow anybody from the public near their facility, so now we have to walk. Even if I don't know them, I feel it's the right thing to do. It would bother me to know that I left these many people helpless when I have the power to point them in the right direction. I let out a yell to get everyone's attention and my voice resonates out and echoes in between the buildings causing almost everyone to turn around. Some of them look confused and others look mildly annoyed. But either way, they all stop to look at me and immediately I can feel the convergence of multiple gazes on my body. At the moment, I realize I've forgotten one, one, one important thing. I don't like... So much for getting better. Still with the situation being what it, what it is, I have no choice but to get my message out and ignore the hot sensation washing over me. I'm feeling like that of the summer sun on the beach, only not as comforting. So maybe likening it to a fever would be more accurate. Regardless, I push the feeling as far to the side as I possibly can and give the information out to the crowd. It's slightly satisfying seeing the lost expressions on the faces of so many people change to that of a more confident person. But among those, there are a few skeptics who begin to question me. In this situation, though, I had pretty solid proof I wasn't lying. After all, it was the bus driver who had given me the information. And while how trustworthy he is could be put up for debate, it was the only source of information we were getting at this moment, and the skeptics eventually realized this and accepted my help. By the way, I am... Here's the thing. I want to apologize for everybody right off the bat for using this microphone I'm using wrong. In between sessions, I finally um, started messing with the audio and, um, dial in the back, in the, the uh, mic direction in the back, and just hearing it in the microphone, I sound a hell, hell of a lot better, and a lot of the background noise is finally cleaned up. So, yeah, sorry about that. So after some time talking and explaining, I finally felt that I... Oh my god, this punctuation. This can't be a Tyranno Builder thing, but this is almost in every Tyranno Builder game I've played. All of them have had bad punctuation. All of them, and that's gotta be impossible. I refuse to believe that's a thing. So, but at the same time, all, all these games back to back can't all be unedited messes. So after some time talking and explaining, I finally felt that I at least could head to the front gate with a clear conscience. The, long, the road is long and windy, but the soft breeze and gentle morning sun make the walk more pleasant as I continue my walk. The scattered people started converging into groups or masses. That was redundant. The clothes are what you'd expect from university students. Diverse and expressive from high-end brand clothes to shorts with a t-shirt. Personally, I came with a set of... Personally, I came with a set of jeans and one of my polo shirts and my father always told me that at Glenaeus and in the real world, your first impression will sit almost entirely on how you look. After that, though, you can begin to have more freedom with your outfits, but he always stressed the importance of looking presentable. When you first meet someone, I'm going to... This is the most unnecessary mon. This is the most unnecessary monologue. I'm, I'm about to say monologues, but excuse me. The most unnecessary monologue I may have ever read, and I played through three or four of Wind Cloud Soccer games. Just get on with it. We don't need to know this. We've got it. Move on. As such, I also took my leather boots that stop at the ankle, which had been polished the night before, as well as my brown belt, which brings the whole outfit together. But my Glenaeus student badge rested comfortably over my pocket... Pocket protector? And a polo shirt? Really? I'm a giant nerd, and even I wouldn't do that. 
Just regarding the people though, the scenery I realized is vastly different from that of the city right outside the, of the, outside the school grounds, even though the only divider between them is an agreed upon imaginary border. Unlike this area, which has a large stone wall with a steel gate that stops students from going over to the numerous, very luxurious looking buildings right across the street where the bus left me, you can see large towers and skyscrapers of well known companies and corporations. <laughs> At least the art is nice. We've got that going for us. Why so many of these companies exist in one spot is a simple question to answer. So simple, in fact, that it can be answered in one sentence. But nobody asks the damn question. Nobody gives a damn. Why are you going on about this? Just go to school. Go. That said of being that all businesses want immediate access to any Glenaeus graduates. That's still a stretch. The moment you graduate and leave the front gate, you will find recruiters who walk down just to offer you a job based on what you specialize in. Again, that seems kind of ridiculous. I mean, if that was true, then most of the major companies in America will be based in Massachusetts or Connecticut. When the reality is, is that they're kind of spaced all out because there's more that goes into where a company is based than just the recruits. I feel like this is going to be a thing that World and Economic could get better. This is the power of Glenaeus. After all, by not grabbing the new graduate for yourself, you are letting your competition have a chance at acquiring some of the best young minds in an industry. Not the industry, an industry. Something no company wants to allow because eventually that'll get you thrown out of business like so many companies before who slept on snatching up new Glenaeus graduates. I, they are really overselling the whole where you went to university thing. That has so little to do with how a company um, operates itself, how they rise and fall, but I digress from my point. It's an interesting world to live in nowadays since I am told that about 50 years ago it was the other way around. Students struggling to find jobs and, and businesses standing at the top and businesses standing at the top of the hierarchy. It's just about to get utopian. And uh, for the record, because I know a lot of people say, well, you mean perfect world. No, I mean idealized world. You have a university that's split off from the rest of society where their students use uh, electronic, physical, and mental enhancement to bake themselves the cream of the crop and all the best companies in the world are right there to offer them multi-million dollar jobs, presumably. So it sounds a little idealistic, that's all I'm saying. It's funny, it's funny how times change and how tables turn. This one being so drastic that it really begs the question of who or what caused it. What well, aside from the educational reform? <laughs> Yes, we passed educational reforms to make it so that business had to um, get the best students of any university. And they became a massive job hunt. And that's how it happened. And you don't have to be a student of business or economics to know that this is kind of going off the rails. Oh, Lordy. Suddenly, I feel a tingling sensation on the back of my head, and I turn around to address it, only to see a fist coming straight for me. A shot of adrenaline entered my veins, enters my veins, and my back bends, my back bends back along with my head to avoid the blow. I feel a rush of air pass over my nose, and see the fist just barely miss the edges of my hair, all in slow motion, as if time wanted to give me the play-by-play. -play. I missed. I could have sworn I would have gotten you. Okay. You're not as used to be, huh? Okay, invisible friend who just tried to knock us out. Still acting on reflex, I feel my body straighten itself out before launching a powerful punch in retaliation. The tone of voice sounds familiar, but the in times of combat or danger, one rarely has the opportunity to process information like that. At this moment in time, a danger to my person was presented, and all resources had to be used on negating that threat, even though I've had like five minutes to think all of this through and probably could have stopped my body at any time. I decided to hit the jerk for being a jerk. So because of that, my full force raised towards the face of my target. Yet before my fist could make contact with the bridge of his nose, he catches it, nullifying the attack completely, much to my dismay. Oh, that's a nice reaction time and reflex there. I almost hurts to stop that attack. 
It's almost as if you aren't using the standard e uh, you What? You're almost as if you are using a standard equip? I recommend reading your situations better before acting though. The fact equips the fact equips are always functional while they're on means you could have seriously hurt me if I wasn't just that much stronger than you. Wait. Okay, this is gonna sound like a redundant question, but what do these things do exactly? Because if you could tell what an equip does just from what a person wearing them does, then how can how can you tell the exact strength of an equip? Like, what if his equip was to enhance his mind and not his body? Then how would he know that? How would he know whether or not it was legal? I'm thinking too hard on this, aren't I? With my punch stop, I take the time to analyze the situation at hand, looking at my assailant and processing their grip strength, speed, and approximate intelligence. Again, I have all this time to figure all of this out in my head space while this person is in front of me and I haven't even seen them yet, yes, I, yet I tried to break their face because of reasons. They don't have a visible equip on my delusion. It's Jet! Get to the... Yeah. Wow! I've got nothing. And usually I've got something, but... I, I, I may have been a little off with the whole uh, piercing through the eyeball thing, but... The tone is there. With a name like Jet, I mean, come on. What the hell, man? Why did you try and hit me? Gee, I don't... know. that's... You know, whatever. Gee, I don't know. Maybe it's because you're way over here when, if I remember correctly, we agreed to meet at the bus stop. You know, the place way back in that direction, which you left without me. I hold my breath as I try to come up with a counter argument, but Excel as I realize he is right. I, I, I have no words. I completely forgot to wait at the bus stop for him, even though I said I would. So. I, again, I'm putting too much thought into this. You could have stopped him from getting on the bus. If you, if you if you agreed to meet up, why didn't you just say, "Hey, I'm over here. It's me, Jet." Why did you let him get on the bus? Why did, you went on the same bus? Why didn't you just sit next to him and say, "Hey, it's me, your friend who you haven't seen in a minute. I dyed my hair, which is why you don't recognize me." Why didn't you say anything at all instead of just letting? Just getting on the bus behind him, presumably riding behind him, letting everything go down, and then trying to hit him because he forgot you. This is so forced. I don't, I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm pretty sure Jed isn't actually mad, though. This is Jed, after all. Calm, collecting, and, and a walking womanizer. But I can't help but feel just a bit annoyed as he tried to take a swing at me. But that's also very jet. But I can't. I I'm trying to come up with some criticism in my head. Give me a minute. I mean, the only thing I really got is that they could have just cut to him saying this instead of that extended monologue again, but whatever. I actually forgot too and noticed you when I turned around to check out and turned around to check out this really hot chicken workout clothes I saw strutting down the sidewalk. I mean she was smoking hot. She's wearing these twists and you know how they how those are usually pretty loose? Nah, they hugged every cut of her They hugged every curve of her beautiful hips and legs. It was like the sweats could barely contain all of the sexiness. And don't get me started on her huge rack. <laughs> All right, Jet, I get the general idea. Nice hips, powerful legs, sizable bust, and a half closed jacket that exposes part of her stomach, right? Something along the lines of a Roman goddess on Earth. Exactly. Man, you should have seen it. That sports bar must have been something considering the lack of, you know, physics, hap physics happenings. Probably super sturdy head. Wait, how do you know that? I didn't mention anything about a jacket. I had just started my rant about her. Did you happen to see her too? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he... I, I, 
Mm-hmm. I think he might have, Mr. I like to speak really loudly. Oh, she's right behind us. I've seen Jet tense up, and I know he is smart enough to realize that the person who just spoke was the one person he didn't want to hear his previous statement. Ha ha! This is so funny! It is so funny when A, the joke is that far ahead of everything else. B, you, um, ha, you, B, you stop the joke halfway and process with these ridiculous monologues. Fortunately, I have enough tact and intelligence not to do anything other than glance at Jet and her with a forced and awkward smile, hoping to avoid the coming storm that Jet miraculously managed to trigger within seconds of us meeting up. Damn, this scenario. Are you serious? I, I, uh. Okay, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair. Um, they are going through a revision of the art style. Some character models are being upgraded, so this is not the final product. I don't think. Let's go with that. This woman stands easily the same height as Jet, if not taller, making her at least five, making her at least five foot ten. And as she stands there, I can't help but admire the beauty of her body. Like an ancient Greek goddess, she stands there proud, powerful, and strong. Her torn arms, trim abs, and well-muscled legs all fighting for, spotlight of for the spotlight of admiration. Not even falling into second when accounting for her impossibly well-endowed chest. Guys, again, this is going to be a thing. Visual medium. Visual. We see it. You don't have to... You know what? Come on. All coming together with a face that can make a man fall in love on its make a man fall in love on its own. She has the face of a rabbit. I mean, <laughs> that's not exactly the most attractive face. It's like it. It really isn't. I'm sorry. Yet yeah, that face right now had a dangerous glint in the eye, a spark that told me that she was a, in a dangerous state of mind, like a predator deciding whether it was going to hurt the prey in front of it now or leave it for later. I stare alone, sending a chill down my spine as it went between me and Jet. It didn't even matter that she was smiling. In fact, it made the stare even worse, yet oddly more attractive. While I'm not much of a controlling person, I would like to ask you two to please refrain from talking about me so loudly in public. I would greatly appreciate it if you would only do so in low voices or in private areas. That could be translated so wrong. I'm gonna leave that alone. She lets out a smile that could kill a tiger and doesn't blink or break eye contact with Jet once she starts speaking, and I can feel a cold wind coming off of her, wrapping itself around us. Jet takes a step back with an uneasy smile, obviously practiced in dealing with situations like these, but when confronted with a woman like this, I can't even imagine what he could possibly do to get himself out of this situation. I'm not reading this line because I'm trying to still process it. Okay. I know this is this is this is a me thing. And let me let me see if I can hide the no I, I oh I can talk can I talk no I can't talk. And no no options good. Okay I know this is a me thing, and I can feel myself getting in trouble for saying this, but you know what? Fine. When you purposely design your characters so that the main thing that says, uh, stands out is their presumably F cup breast, then you're not really in a position to make this point about women being mad about men oogling them. And even she was like, okay, if you're gonna admire me and my sexiness, that's fine, just don't do it loudly. Just. This is not the point you want to be making right now in this monologue. <laughs> no, she is definitely right. If anything, I'm impressed that she approaches with such a common play voice. Most women would have just flipped the lid by now. As for Jed, I can tell he is feeling the heat just by his body language. His default look, I don't want trouble stands starting to come up. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. I tend to speak very loudly when I get 
I mean, when I find something, someone, someone who is truly cut above the rest. Uh, what is your name? I worry about giving someone like you my name, but wait, 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 what? D didn't you just see? This is what I mean. Didn't you just have a problem with them? I mean, if you, if you think, I mean, this game is breaking my brain. Oh my god. My name is Allison. Why would you like to know? Why do you think? Just so I can address you properly is all. No need to be worried about giving me your name. I'm sure we can be good friends. You know, you know, after we get over this little hiccup. Maybe over some lunch? Not that I, you know, so we can pro properly talk in a calm environment. Get to know each other, maybe. Make sure this little episode is all- We get the f We get the point. You have a lot of nerve trying to ask me out in this situation of all things. I'll give you credit for having nerves, but no. I don't take kindly to men who see women as nothing more than baubles to be stared at. Your breasts are about to escape both the confines of your jacket and your sports bra. Again, I understand the point, but it's coming from a character designed specifically to be bobble to be a bobble to be stared at. Time and place, that's all I'm saying. Rather, I don't take comment to many men in general since, on average, they all are after the same thing. Not that I can fault them completely since I do choose what to... MOVING ON! You can't undermine... Ugh. That's not... Okay. Easiest way to go about this conversation. Look, I know... All she has to say is, look, I know I'm hot, but I want to, I want men to admire me for something more than my body. Done. This is a two second, not even a two second, two sentence conversation at best. And we're going on and on with her going around the point where she can just say, I, I, I'm fully aware that I'm hot, but the fact that that's the first thing people notice about me is what bothers me. It would still, it, it, you know, it would still be a little hypocritical from the writer's point of view, but it would show a little bit of self-awareness, and I, I, maybe I'm expecting too much. I just thought about it. Right, you are completely right. I apologize on behalf of my friend here for his stupid behavior. Don't think too badly of him, though. He really is a nice guy. Oh, is he? Should I take your word for it, Mr. Friend? You seem to have more tact than your friend just by judging by your... Just by, just by judging by your ability to keep eye contact right now, but you're the first who is capable of repressing the base, their basic male issues for a bit. Zip up your jacket if you're going to go on this rant. That's what I have to say to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't get to have two boob windows. <laughs> and complain that that's how people look at it. I'm sorry. Again, I know the point. And if the point was presented in any other way, I would give this author a little bit of credit. But the way it's being presented is, how dare you stare at me like the author and artist intends for you to stare at me. And we're spending 10 minutes on this conversation. <laughs> this conversation could have been over by now. It's only a matter of time, and it's not like what you're thinking right now is any different from other men anyway. Although I will take the Roman goddess compliment since it's a rather tasteful Oh my god. I'm glad you found it appropriate, um, Allison. Although, if I have to be frank, I was taken aback a bit by your physique. Why wouldn't you be- <laughs> Leave a like! Leave a like if you enjoyed the video! <laughs> I can't, I don't think I could go on. Again, that self-awareness framed in a, okay, I get it. Framed any other way, I would kind of understand. It's framed as a, how dare you, how dare you look at me like this. I know I'm ridiculously hot, but you could be looking, but you, I want to be appreciated for my mind. And you need to be looking me in the eyes, even though I'm aware of my body. And it, again. Two sentence conversation. I'm aware I'm hot, but I pref 
prefer to be thought of for my intellect. Maybe if you um, approach me in a different way, we could be friends. Walk off, bye. This is a two sentence, maybe three sentence conversation. We are still here going around in circles over the same point that from any other character would make sense. But my god, I'm ranting. So like if you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And VFs.com, it is VFs.com. This character is breaking my brain. I can't take it anymore. We're moving on. I don't know what's coming in the next one. Hopefully we can finish this conversation, but this video is stopping here for now because I can't take it anymore.